Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna listen to Dr. Keith Ashley from the University of North Florida. He's gonna talk about economics of the Mississippians. This is some earn your leisure type conversation right here for black people because these are the Mississippians, okay? These are the people that we're gonna listen to Dr. Keith Ashley explain to us just how resourceful these people were. Understanding when we say Mississippians, we're not talking about the state of Mississippi. We're talking about the entire landmass of North America, okay? And understand what we have within our landmass. We had the Great Lakes. We had the coastal regions. We had the Appalachian Mountains. These people were mining silver, gold, galena, copper, mica, emeralds, quartz, okay? Why were they doing this? What happened to this power? Now they'll tell you today, archeologists will tell you today that these people are extinct, but that's really just because African-Americans and black people don't know anything about this. They don't know anything about this. Look at what he's offering. Precious mineral stones, all right? When they came over here, they may have wiped out the Native Americans, those people that are Siberian, Mongolian, Russian, but look at what the French is doing right here with, with these guys. Look at what they're doing. They're looking for allies. They're coming from poor countries. France, England, Spain, these are poor countries, relatively insignificant, all right? Not resourceful. These people saw things that they never saw before when they came over here. They had no position to wipe anybody out. All they could do was make partners and try to do business. And really, you know, you see where we at today. They never wiped anybody out, but now the Mississippian is now the, the black African-American who is completely assimilated. And it's not because they were more powerful than us. It's just because you got people that will sell you out, okay? When we look at this book right here, this talks about slavery in Indian country. There were already kings that were going to war with other kings. Saturiona, his biggest enemy was Alada Atina, okay? When he was clicking up with the French, he was trying to put them onto his, onto his program. He was trying to make them go to war with him against his enemies, okay? Slavery in Indian country. Let's listen to Dr. Keith Ashton, the University of North Florida. He will let us know what these people was doing across the entire landmass, super interconnected, all right? If you lived in Florida, you still knew what was going on in Ohio, you knew what was going on in the Northeast. They all practiced the same customs, traditions, rituals. They practiced the same economic system, traded with each other. Okay, furs, tobacco, crops, tropical, tropical crops. Now, this is not happening like this on in any other place in the world at this time. You have to, you have to understand that the Silk Road for the East was where all the resources was coming from. But over here, the Mississippi River was all we needed. And then all the tributary, all the tributary, tributary rivers got the goods and services everywhere they needed to go. This is a pure economic conversation, okay, for black people. This is what black, quote unquote, black people need to know. Let's get into it.